Welcome back to another episode of Drink Tales. And today, we're, we're, we're going to experiment and, and, and try to make a new cocktail. Mm -hmm. what, what, what you got in mind? I was thinking summer, and with summer comes a whole bunch of genres, specifically TV. I always go down this road where I'm like, am I able to create a tiki cocktail? We've tried several times here. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we succeeded every time. Yeah. Um, it's just that with our limited resources, as it were, mm -hmm. we don't really have like the accoutrement, like the, the glasses and stuff like that. You know, I feel like we're getting a little better on our garnishes, mm -hmm. but spoiler alert, this one won't have a garnish because I couldn't think of one for it. Okay. But, um... I was leaning towards mint mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. but we'll see what you guys think. If you guys have a better idea, if you guys have a better idea for our garnish, let us know after the cocktail is done in the description, mm -hmm. or hit us up on Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we're everywhere these days, so right. be able to do that. Um, so this may be this may classify as tiki. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to use an unconventional ingredient for this. Mm -hmm. And you guys will know when we get there. But one of the... But a, but I was focusing on a specific ingredient. Mm -hmm. Because it had me interested. And that was a uh, cream of coconut or Coco Lopez. For anybody that just knows the stuff when you buy it right at the store. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like what other cocktails you could do with Coco Lopez besides Pina Colada. Yes. And there are a few, but they still have a lot in common, and that's usually they will consist of pineapple juice and lots and lots of rum. Right. Not all at the same time, but you know, they are out there. Mm -hmm. There are some outliers. I saw one that actually utilized sake okay and i saw one that utilized tequila i'm gonna have to try those out because those looked interesting mm -hmm. and delicious mm -hmm. a couple that used gin okay so you know the coco lopez is versatile okay we're gonna test the limits of that versatility this time around because i'm using something that's not those um so I guess we'll get started. Oh, and we're not blending this too. Mm -hmm. That was another thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, shaking. yeah, we're gonna shake this because okay. I wanted to see if we could do a cocktail and not have to use the blender with the Coco Lopez. Mm -hmm. I know there were some cocktails that I looked up that did that did forego the blender, mm -hmm. but it was an option for them. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna use the blender for this one. Okay. So I guess we can start with our juice, with our juices. I'm gonna do, first of all, let's get our thing ready first. You sit right there, you stay. We're gonna start with our lime juice. Full lime or half? The uh, half lime. We should only leave the half. Now this recipe you're using, are you cribbing off of an existing cocktail recipe or are you, no, where'd you come um, up with this idea? It's, it's not going to be a riff, I don't think it's going to be a riff from anything mm -hmm. because the ingredients I'm using, while you can find most of these ingredients in similar cocktails, they're not going to fall in that they shouldn't fall in that category because right. like what I'm using like won't even match up when I when you see all the ingredients all together mm -hmm. like they're not even gonna match up to anything that's out there already unless there's some guy in the deepest darkest parts of the internet that made this exact cocktail and it's like I was here first so well, if you're that guy in the deepest darkest part of the internet let us know he will not. <laughs> or girl, if you're if you're if you're if you're a lady out there in the deepest, darkest part of the internet, 
who made this drink before we did, let us know. We are going to do one ounce of pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. But you were asking, you know, about this being a riff off of a existing cocktail. Um, I was more or less trying to go off flavor pairings. Okay. In regards to when I make this. Okay. So that's where we're going with that. Um, then we're gonna use our Coco Lopez, which has congealed into uh, soft gelatinous goo. And we're gonna do an ounce of that. But it should still work all the same. All the same. Does it do that when it's in the refrigerator? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, for anybody out there curious, you know, that's what happens to your Coca Lopez when you refrigerate it. If you like to keep it room temperature, that is an option. But, you know, for me, it's like, mm, I'm scared to do that. <laughs> because I don't want it to get old or whatever. Okay. Now for the alcohol. We're going to do half an ounce of Falerno. Okay. A staple in um, tiki. tiki drinks. And half an ounce of Benedictine. Okay. Now Benedictine, do you see that in many tiki drinks? You you may see it in a drink or two. Okay. It gets around in tiki drinks. I find that I see it more in cocktails like Sazeracs and stuff. And I probably just threw out the Sazerac and it's not even in there. Mm -hmm. It's either the Sazerac <laughs> or the Bucare, but those style of cocktails. Mm -hmm. Those three ingredient three or more ingredient liquor forward cocktails mm -hmm. that you'll find in your speakeasies and the like. Mm -hmm. The last ingredient, and here's the surprise one, we're using Finny. Mm -hmm. Having used Finny since the first time we put it on mm -hmm. the channel. So, it's making great a smelling, spirit, grand return, yeah. We're gonna use an ounce and a half of this. the flavor notes from this cocktail should match up. I'm looking at everything that's in here and I'm wondering if my glass is too small for what we're doing. If it is, should I get a bigger glass or stay the course? You think this will be a big enough glass? Stay the course. Okay. So without tasting it off rip, um, I would say your your um, garnish would be the pineapple.
pineapple. Pineapple fries? Yes. What if we did a mixture of pineapple fries and, um, man. Hmm. No, because the way the color, the way the... The color of this drink, first of all, which I really like, it, it's got this great color to it. Mm -hmm. I I feel like this is a this would be a um, tiki drink that would be more simplistic. As a matter of fact, if this was in a tiki cup, like then you would have that prawn sticking up, and it would just, it would be simple yet effective. That's that's my thought. Okay. Well. Go ahead and taste and see if it changes. If okay. those thoughts change. Okay. Mm, this is pretty good. Very good. As a matter of fact, this brings out this brings out the the flavors in Benny that I wanted to taste when tasting it solo. It, it, it did something to the Finny where it brought out the flavors of the Finny that I really like that you can smell. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, that's really good. Taste that. Getting that penny, mm -hmm. yeah. And I stand by my pineapple prawns. Everything in here curves that strong flavor from the penny, mm -hmm. and elevates its it elevates its its flavors from its own. Mm -hmm. From its fruits. Well, there is a pineapple. You get guava and pineapple mm -hmm. from that particular spirit. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this is really good. Cashew apples, flavor of pineapple, citrus, and cashew apple. Well, there it is. It was kind of made for this. Mm -hmm. Produced out of Goa, India. Mm -hmm. So, what do we call this? Ooh. Dub this drink the Indian Vacation. And it's incredibly delicious. A tiki drink for India. I don't know if that squares well, but hey, as far as I'm concerned, it tastes good and that's all that matters. And I'm even thinking to myself, If I wanted to maximize this drink, mm -hmm. 
do I go up or down on specific ingredients? How much penny is it? Uh, one and a half ounces. Like, would I bump that up to two, or would that be too much alcohol? But two uh, ounces. Bump it up to two ounces. Okay. Uh, one of the aspects of tiki drinks is getting. But don't forget, you got your Benedictine and that falernum in there. True. The falernum doesn't have that much alcohol in it, but. I think bump that Finny up to two ounces anyway. Okay. If you want to make it like stronger. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, also there's. Still got more. Yeah, I should have did this in a bigger glass. And also there's a prospect of a lot of the uh, tiki drinks are usually made to hide the um, alcohol anyway. Mm -hmm. Like these can be dangerous yeah. drinks to have. That's why I say bump that up to two ounces. And I would add this to another, along with the pineapple prawns, mm -hmm. another... Um, Another garnish, I would put uh, lime wheels. I think the lime wheel would be a bit much. You um, think so? Yeah. Because um, I'm also thinking of coloring and theming, and I think the coloring of the drink, well, there is a green real tent. well with green, with green objects. Well, that's why I kind of suggested mixing the prawns with the mint. Mm -hmm. But if you think, um, I wanted to do like an island type deal mm -hmm. with the way the garnishes were. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, we'll we'll be making this drink in the future down the line for another project, mm -hmm. and we'll mess around with the garnish. Yeah, this is delicious. surprise myself every time I come up with something and I'm like eh, I don't know maybe, maybe <laughs> and then lo and behold it works well with that said that'll do it for this episode of Drink Tales be sure to like and subscribe hit that bell so that you're notified of all content coming to the channel you also gotta check us out on Instagram you gotta check us out on Facebook mm -hmm. you gotta check us out on Twitter mm -hmm. what else we got if you know of a spirit or a liquor, mm -hmm. a wine, mm -hmm. a beer, some type of snack, dessert, or brunch, breakfast type deal, a drink, a drink um, recipe, like just or any recipe for that matter, and you know, throw some savory dishes in there, like you know, maybe there's a. a awesome sandwich you know we don't mention sandwiches that often we on don't here like and i think the next time i think the next because we're not doing a tasting notes this month i think the next tasting notes will be around sandwiches i'm thinking i've been think i've been i've been thinking of that for a minute i think we're gonna do tasting notes with sandwiches next month yeah but like let us know like if you know any of that stuff let us know especially if like we can't get it here or it's very obscure let us know about that you know hit us up in our dms hit us up in our um our social medias and whatnot and let us know about it you know let's talk it out Maybe you send it to us. Maybe you point us in the direction of where we can find that stuff. That also goes for locations. If there's like distilleries, breweries, uh, speakeasies, bars, restaurants, anything of that nature that you think we might enjoy the food and the drink there, let us know so that we can go there. I've been mentioning it for the entirety of July now, and I'm going to mention it again. We are closing in on our trip to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. All our New Orleans followers, viewers, anything of the like, you got suggestions of where we should go and what we should be eating and drinking. Let us know. We want to be we want to be the judges of it if if those things are delicious or exactly. not. Exactly. We don't want to have to come back to our uh, 
hotel or wherever it is we're staying. We like we want to be out all day. day. Exactly. Because you guys made all of these suggestions on where to go. Exactly. And we have guests coming with us that have never been to New Orleans before, so we want to show them a good time. Exactly. So with that said, that'll do it for this episode of Drink Tales, and until next time, everybody, peace.